Chronicles. It's a story of two glory addicts who are in passionate pursuit of God's presence. Join us as we share our exciting journey into the glory of God. Hello and welcome back, people. You wonderful glory addicts, you. <laughs> My name is Madeline and I'm Janine. And we are your glory addicts. We are here in episode 10. We have made it to double digits. God is good. You guys are still watching us. Thanks for watching. <laughs> We do greatly appreciate you guys tuning in every week, you know, watching our antics and, you know, just us having conversations with each other. And so we appreciate you. We greatly, greatly appreciate you. Last in the last episode, we finished talking about our experience encounters in glory school. And uh, one of the things that Janine and I are very good for is finding something to study together like we'll find a book and we'll say okay let's you know let's focus on this next and I think she had already purchased some books and we were you know already on on tap to study some things so um when we got back from glory school we started this book it, it's an interactive guide um or study called How to Hear God's Voice by Mark and Patty Verkler, B-I-R-K-L-E-R. An awesome, awesome book that um, takes you through um, how to just sit down and listen to to God talking because basically God is always talking. He's like, you just got to get on the right frequency. And recognize his voice. And the Bible says, I mean, Jesus himself said that, you know, my sheep know my voice. So clearly that means he's talking, you know. And um, a stranger's voice, a sheep will not follow. Not at all. Um, so it was it, it was good. I mean, what's, <clears throat> what one of the things that we encountered a lot, though, was um, while we didn't see the manifestations of everything that we were experiencing together at the church that we attended, we were diligent to pray that the spirit of God be released, that, you know, that what we were experiencing would go there. And so it was it was amazing how we would shift to our next topic of study. and. Our pastor would say, we're about to start talking about this topic. And it'd be the same topic we're about to study. And so it was just like confirmation to us whenever we'd go to church and to find out that, wow, he's about to talk about hearing God's voice, too, and how important that is and, and all of this. So and it, it was almost like we were actually pioneers because we were ahead of the curve. And he would say, all right, well, when, when we finish this topic, we're going to start talking about this topic. And we would have already been in it for a while. And we just look at each other like, wow, God, you're just doing it. <laughs> and so, I mean, it was so cool. It was so cool how Holy Spirit does that. And even he was answering our prayers because that was our earnest cry. He was like, well, if we can't, you know, if we experience this, let us be the seeds for our congregation that we can just believe, God, that whatever we experience, they can experience in every service and the pat pastor experiences it, the whole, you know, all of the staff, they just get it, you know. And so that happened a lot. So back to the study. Um, it starts out <clears throat> just talking about God is talking all the time. And um, all the time, all the time. That's amazing. Like, like, for real, like he's never not talking. He's never, never. He always wants always to tell you something. something about you, like all the time. All the and time. the thing about it is, since we get like we're human, there's so much he could tell us about us. You know, <laughs> like now, truly, now truly. Janine, let me tell you. <laughs> Remember that thing you did? 
Remember that? Well, that was this. And, you know, you kind of took it the wrong way. And it's okay, though. Because guess what? You will always get a second chance <laughs> to fix <laughs> <laughs> right exactly exactly man that's wild i just thought about something when you said that but i'm not gonna go there right now um it, it's another story that has nothing to do with what we're talking about that's why I'm that's not, how I'm she not, is i'm that's not gonna she... take i'm not gonna take the squirrel route i'm gonna stay focused remember i was talking about focus with but you that's last how, week yeah but that's how so you I, are so we'll i be... go and I, I was like no don't stay focused so that's, anyway yeah. i'll talk to you about it later anyway <laughs> No, they're gonna, um, people are going to want to know what it is now. If I was watching okay. and you said you had something to say, and then you say, I'm not going to tell you right now. Okay, sure. Um, You sure? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not terrible. Um, I just remember, you know, it's like we were just talking about, uh, what were we talking about? I don't even know. But anyway, something we said just now reminded me of that time we were out to eat. And someone was trying to speak words to you, and you told him something that wasn't true, and <gasps> and he, I was, that's why I was like, I wasn't. That's why I wasn't. Okay, no. That's, that's why I was like, we're transparent. So no, okay. Yeah. So what happened? We were at Boston Market, and this is like, I this don't was know. When before we even got started, I think. Yeah, this was before we got started, and um. I had an issue with not being honest, which, you know, I mean, that's something. Um, okay, so what happened was this person asked me um, for my number. And <laughs> why are you laughing? Stop laughing. Okay, so this person asked me for my number, and I really didn't want to be mean or anything like that and that I'm not saying you know that this is something that happens all the time but what I did was I just really instead of you know wanting to come off mean I I lied and said I had a boyfriend I did not it was a lie and immediately I felt really convicted and so um the Holy Spirit said you know convicted me and then I told Madeline, and oh my gosh, why did I do that? Because all she did <laughs> was echo Holy Spirit to the point where I got in the car and I was like, I got to go back. I just got to go back. Oh. So I went back and I said, hey, yeah, I lied. I, I just wasn't interested and I should have just said that to you. And so... That was hearing the voice of God. And a very good application. Yeah. And what a real friend would do for you. <laughs> because my, my because my thing is I couldn't notice be her how friend. She's her. To, you notice how she it, this is true, yes, but notice how she highlights her role. <laughs> just well, like, I mean I'm yeah, no. I'm just, I, Mm. Telling you how to spot a good friend. A <laughs> yes. good friend will check you and say, you know what? I don't know if that was right. Yeah. You know? And, you know, I, I'm like, if I'm really your friend, I put you, your relationship with God above anybody else's relationship. And is it worth you separating yourself from God by telling a lie to make him feel better? No. So I was like, you probably need to fix that. And again, and see, this is a part of the issue that I had as far as, and, you know, I say had because, you know, I'm always going to be in the faith talk of, hey, this is, it's over. You know, I'm not playing. But, you know, I mean, it's a constant work. But so this is a part of my process of pleasing, not really pleasing people, but not really wanting to. Um, not being compromising in the fact that even if it's to save someone's feelings, I may tell them something that's not necessarily true. And it may seem like it's all right and it's good, but it's not. And, um, you know, just being honest with people and, you know, having a pure heart and even out of that, not being mean and vicious, of course, but 
you know, why wouldn't this person accept, you know, you're a nice person. It's just, I'm not interested in you. And that's okay. Just like someone may not be interested in me that I like, you know, it just may not happen. That's human nature. That's how we are as people. So, you know, but me not feeling comfortable enough to express myself. And so, you know, God continually, even through all of this process, worked on that with me. And that was one of the things that really um, was loud and clear, the message and the lesson inside of that. So, um, but now we're going back to what we initially started talking about. Yeah, I mean, but that's, that's a clear demonstration of how God is always talking. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it's obvious, you know, and not only did he talk to her, but he confirmed it in me to her, you right. know, and that's how God will do. He'll, you know, hey, look, you know, he'll give you more chances to, to fix it before you get too far away. Like, you know, yeah. you knew this before you left. Why don't you fix it now? You know? Yeah. And so. um, But, yeah, we started the book and um, he. Ver- he he basically used Habakkuk um, chapter two, I think the model there uh, laid out. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I really encourage you to get the book. It's great. It's maybe twenty bucks on Amazon. It's the best twenty dollars. Yeah, it's like right around twenty, uh, and it's an awesome, awesome book. Mm. He encourages um, you know you as the reader to journal. To journal your 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 thoughts and what you're you're saying to God, and then listen and write down what He says back to you. So, I mean, it's an amazing thing because as of right now, I have over a year's worth of journals that highlight conversations I've had with God. So, at any point in time, I can just go back and make sure I've done exactly what He's told me to do in yeah. the past, which is amazing. You know, sometimes you hear God say stuff and you're like, okay, God, and um, you forget, you know, some, you just straight up forget sometimes like, oh, I forgot to do that, you know, right. and, you know, this serves as you can't forget It's in it, it's almost OK. This is this is good. Please don't call me sacrilegious or anything. But the same way the the people who wrote the Bible got inspired by Holy Spirit. That's what's happening with me. I'm getting my own conversation for my own life from God. And so That's it's powerful. awesome. That's powerful. It is very powerful. It's like, this is what I want you to do. And he'll say stuff. He'll forecast stuff for me. He'll give me a picture of something. And, you know, he talks to me in pictures and a lot. And, <laughs> and um, you know, that was one of the areas because hearing from God and getting still was my challenge. Because just like the squirrel went and I followed the squirrel <laughs> and thought I had a whole nother conversation. <laughs> That's how my mind works sometimes. You know, one thing brings something else up and I'll be like, oh, yeah, look at that. You know, but <laughs> oh, no. uh, but um, but it's true. It's very true. And so to sit and still yourself before God and focus in on him, you know, it's like that's the training that you're going to have to have to be able to start hearing. And after a point of you just doing that, you'll be able to just go right in and, and talk to him while you walk in, while you're talking, um, while you're in whatever, you know. And what you'll realize is you've been talking to God your whole life and you thought it either was you or it, you thought it was the devil. This way. Mm-hmm. There we go. So, um, it's like, what? Why would you? I mean, God is always talking, and by going through this book, it was so powerful because we talk to each other like we're talking to Him all the time, and it's like not even we don't have to write it down. It's not like we have to go to the journal to hear God. It's like him answering your questions before you even get it out. You know, you about to ask something in your mind and in your mind, you hear the answer already. And it's like, cool. You know, 
You have to, you having conversations with him and not even, you know, nobody knows, which is, you know, it's a whole nother thing. So God wants that for us. He wants us to be able to, um, to know his voice. And it's a promise. He said, my sheep will know my voice and a stranger's voice. They will not follow. So cling to that promise and the process just quickly. You want to go through anything about this, Janine? Um, no, you can go through the process. I have something to share about. Okay. All right. So the process, um, you, you got to know that God will speak to you with, with thoughts and pictures and impressions. Um, he'll speak to you from his word. There's many sources that he can speak to you from. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it's just like sh- something that passes through your mind in response to something maybe that you have said mm-hmm. or thinking about like how to solve a, a problem. And sh- you get a picture in your mind and that's God. You know, the place in your mind where if I asked you to 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 make your own hot fudge sundae in your head, that place where you build it and you're looking at the picture of it. And then all of a sudden it's like, I need to go get me a hot fudge sundae because that thing looked good. You know, that place, that place is the screen called your imagination and God gave it to you. It is a holy organ that you can sanctify back to God. The issue is because, because we have watched so much stuff and got desensitized by the media and we see so much negativity. Right. Our our imagination is just totally just out of whack. So from time to time, I'll find myself like totally not watching any TV or, you know, not even listening to music a lot. Just soaking my mind and thinking on things of God. And, you know, people might call me super spiritual, but because I know how my mind is. I see a picture with every word that you say. So if I'm listening to somebody describe something negative to me, my mind is drawing the picture of that thing in that space and it can come back at any time. And I don't want that. So I am very careful to guard how I hear and what I hear as well as what I see and make sure that what I say is in alignment with what what the word says consistently as consistently as possible well and I think that you know you brought that up what you brought up was I mean that was obviously Holy Spirit because what I will say is that when you have things that clog the channel so me telling that white line that seemed like it made things easier for me easier all the way around, didn't have to explain myself, didn't have to go into anything, was actually a lie. And that would stop me and that would be a blockage for me to hear God. And so, you know, when Holy Spirit speaks to us about stuff, it's for us to realize. And sometimes we can't correct it right away, but, you know, just to be like, okay, Lord, I just give that up. Like, you know, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be doing that. And not to say we have to walk around repenting all day because that's not it either. But just for you to see and understand that things like that will block you from hearing God like you should. Because he's like, hey, there's this thing that is right here. It's like elephant in the room. Yeah. Yeah. You know, can we get rid of that or move that out of the way? You don't see that? You don't see that <laughs> polka dot elephant right there? Right. <laughs> really? Yeah. And I mean, we can't be, you know, like it's, it's not, you know, let me be perfect. Um, but just realizing that what you see, what you say, you know, just like Madeline said, that's going to be the filter that everything yep. comes through. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, it's it the quieting process could it could start with you just repenting for stuff that you might not realize that you've been doing or just clearing your conscience from anything that, you know, could possibly separate you. You know, if you told a lie today, if you, you know, cut somebody off and flick them the bird. I mean, people do it. Anything. Because it's, it's all real. the same. It's real. Every sin has the same level of. Every, of, um, it's- all every, the every, it had the same yeah. value. 
it's all sin. There is no mm-hmm. worse sin or no yeah. better sin. Every exactly. sin is sin to God, and it <laughs> does the same thing. It separates you from him. Straight up. So um, you repent, you know, go through the whole thing and just ask God to cleanse from whatever. And um, focus in on him and ask him questions. Ask him questions. One of the exercises that was really cool in the book, because they have like exercises at the end of each chapter that let you think about, you know, some of the stuff that he talks about in the chapter. And, you know, you write out or, you you know, type it up. I was typing up a lot of my stuff. Um, One of the really cool exercises was about reading a passage of scripture and asking God questions about that. You know, like, what did that look like? Or, you know, what were you what were you thinking when you did this? So, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, I was praying about which passage of scripture to to do that with, right? And um I thought about Stephen in the New Testament in Acts when, you know, he was going about and doing miracles and, you know, the people got mad for something that he had done and then they wanted to, you know, they put him in had him in court and he was, you know, speaking his mind or whatever. Um, but he was basically telling the whole story about Jesus. And um he get I mean, that boy was testifying. I'm telling you, he went from the beginning to Abraham all the way through the the patriarchs to, you know, mm-hmm. Jesus died on the cross and you crucified and da 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 and the whole nine. And so then he goes and I see him right now standing up next to the father in his glory. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, Stephen. So the question I had for God was, as I was reading this, I'm going like he is so passionate and he is just telling this story. And the people are getting madder and madder and madder. And they're picking up their stones, ready to throw them at him. And um, that point when he was like, I see him right there standing up at the right hand of Father, heaven is open. He's just like. Yeah. So my question was, Jesus, why did you stand up for him? And um, what I've learned about Jesus is he is a very simple guy. He, he don't have to complicate stuff. He ain't tripping. He ain't like going to give you some, you know, scientific answer about stuff. His answer. I stood up for him because he stood up for me. Oh, what? come on. <laughs> I was like, that's what I'm talking about. Jesus. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, because he was like, he was standing up for me. He told the whole thing. He went from the beginning all the way to, you know, talking about Jesus. And then he did exactly what Jesus did. F- Father, forgive him. They don't even know what they're doing. Oh, so he was like, I stood up for him because he stood up for me. He was representing right. me at that point. <laughs> and so Jesus was like, if Jesus was like this, he would fist pound. Like, That's my boy right there. That That was that was hot what he did you know and so i just really felt that jesus was just like at that moment i was like get that boy up here because he belongs up here you know wow and he's obviously oh, he's about to go that was powerful that's a powerful revelation that oh. G- G- he just yeah. told me that it's like that's why i did it and you know what i thought about was you know how like you're in church sometimes and in different different denominations you might have a preacher who is preaching real good you know and people just start standing up, like, mm, preach, preacher, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Bear witness. Yeah, and I'm going, I wonder, do they know why they're standing up? You know, are they standing up because Jesus stood up for Stephen like that? Or are they just standing up just because somebody stood up and they saw somebody stand up when somebody was talking real good? You know, and so that's what that's how my mind thinks. I'm going like, what's the root of why you're doing what you're doing? You know, so I asked Jesus question, like, why you do that? You know, what's up with that? And so that's the conversation style that we have. I just say, hey, what's up? You know, and just go for it. He'll tell me that he loves me and just start rattling it off. All the stuff he wants to tell me for today or yesterday about whatever's coming up or, you know, he'll go uh, all kinds of places. You know, tell me about my future. Tell me about different relationships that I'm in that I need to get fixed or do things or how I need to operate today or even a word to share on Twitter or Facebook or something, you know, cause it's a ministry tool for me. Um, so I'm like, cool. So, I mean, my conversations with him are real chill. You know, God is not like a be thou thus guy. He doesn't talk in King Jamesian, 
He talks at your language. He uses your vocabulary. If you don't know big words, guess what he's not going to do? Use big words with you. You know, if he tells you a big word, you just need to go look that up. So because it's going to be something relevant to your life. But he typically will just use whatever is in you and use your language to talk to you. That's how <laughs> the familiar. Man, I love him. Isn't he amazing? He's custom. He's like a custom guy. Yeah. He's he like customizes custom. everything. He's like custom for me. And then he's custom yeah. for you. Yeah. That's so amazing. I love Isn't that. Isn't that cool? Oh. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, another time, I don't mean to monopolize this, but he talks to me. I mean, I love it. Another time, one of the things that Patricia King got as a prophetic word initially was God loves you with an everlasting love. And that's found in Jeremiah. And she was just, you know, prophesying the word. And a lot of times, if you know the word, you have a prophetic word for somebody because you can just speak the word. Like, I know the plans that God has for you, plans to prosper you and to do you good. See, you meet your expected end. It's it's a word. It's the truth, you know, and yeah, you probably knew that, but maybe you needed to hear it. He has a plan and a purpose for your life, and it's a good plan that's going to be good for you and good for everybody who you're around. Mm. Yeah. And so she had this word, God loves you with an everlasting love. So I was meditating on that one day and I was going like, God, so what's up with that everlasting love thing? He was like, well, Madeline, let me explain this to you. You know, I love you with a love that's that's everlasting. But guess what? It's tailor made just for you. Like it's fit. Like it's almost like a mold that only you can fit in. This love that I have for you Ow. is like a mold that's tailor fit just for you. But guess what? I love everybody like that with a tailor made mm-hmm. love just for them. And I'm like, God, that's what's up. Ah, that's good stuff. Good, yeah. Yeah. Um, you all right over there? You probably getting what, what, you good. You not good? I mean, I'm just thinking about like the amazingness of God. That that's that's it. Cause I mean, He talks to me totally different than He talks to her. Like, right. you know, I would just be tripped out about stuff. Like, okay, tell me about this. Like, I would just, okay, Lord, what do you want to tell me? And then you know, He would just start, and I would be like. Are you talking to me? So, <laughs> like, who are you talking to? <laughs> exactly. Because he just wants to, like, just expand, just take the limits off. Like, when he's talking to us, it's like he's taking the limits off. And um, I crave direction and, and tell me and just tell me more and tell me more and That's what he did. And he just continued. I'd ask him questions about, okay, what am I supposed to do about this? What am I supposed to do about that? And, um, and it was so just amazingly awesome because one of the things the book tells us is that we're supposed to get two advisors. Um, at least, at least two, at least two to read, to read spiritual advisors, spiritual advisors, To make, you know, to read your journals and make sure that, you know, you're not um, flaky, hearing from yourself, hearing from your flesh and making up stuff. Yeah. That's what they're for. You don't want to just like write on a page um, what you want to write. And so for me, you know, I had a slight issue with allowing the words that he spoke to me to be read by other people because I just was like, who are you talking to? You are not talking to me. (laughs) And it was very, um, and so just getting through that process of saying, okay, so this is, my friend, and this is someone whom I don't know, but I I trust that they're a believer. And okay, can you read my stuff? So it was it was for me going through that process, like to the what he was saying, I would be thinking, well, okay, so I have to let people read this and okay. All right. Okay. 
I'm going to let it go. So, um, but it was amazing because, like I said, I mean, my journal looked different from hers, but it was still God. And it was God yeah. speaking for me and it was God to, to me and it was God speaking for her to her. And so it was different, but it was still him. It was still his voice. Yeah. And um, during this time, I became more aware of his love. And so what journaling did for me was it expanded my 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 thought of his love for me and not only that but my purpose and 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 who I am and my identity because that's what Satan will come and try to distort and and come after is your identity. And he will come at you when you are very, very young to do that. He won't wait until you know, it's acceptable. <laughs> he will come at you at a very young age to distort your identity and to get you away from um, what God has said that you are and who you are and corporately and individually and all of that. And so what journaling did for me was it brought pieces back. It brought pieces back of things that... um. I sensed, but then, no, you know, not me, no, but I mean, but just in general, like it brought pieces back of things. And so it was amazing. And then that's how I learned more and accepted more of the love of God, because I was like, well, you have all these wonderful things to say. You obviously love me. There's nothing I can do to earn anything. There's nothing I can do to get rid of anything. It doesn't happen that way. You know, you are who you are. You are identified as who you are. And Satan sees that from when you are, when God knits his spirit with you from the very beginning. And so journaling is important because it helps you bear witness and come into the fullness of who you are. And the identity, because in order for us to go forth and be who we called, who we have been called to be and fulfill our specific purpose in the whole grand, great body, you know, get in our niche and then only and not only, but in our lives personally, whether it's business ideas, whether it's a job, whether it's moving across the state of um, the United States, whether it's. Whatever it might be, you need to hear God's voice. And so that's your identity. When you are with, when you're hearing what God has said about you, that's your identity. That's why it's so, so vitally important. And um, just even thinking about how we went to glory school and then we have this whole grand perspective that we get. And then once we come back from that, it's like, okay, God's like, I want to talk to you now. Like, I want to talk to you about some stuff. So here we go with the fullness of who I am in the grand scheme of things and what the word says. And now the fullness of who I am and what I have to say about you. Like, it went from who I am and then what I have to say about you. So. That was like sewing. It was just sewing a tapestry together for us. And um, what you will begin to notice and what I saw was that there was a divine path. So the hearing um, was so very important because not only did it help my identity, but in, in that confidence, assurance, um, rest, um, all these things that came as a result of me being connected to who created me in a more intimate, loving way. And prophecy, because it's basically what you're doing, prophecy is for exhorting, it's for comfort. And so any words that were outside of that, we automatically knew. That wasn't from God, and so that's that's something else. That's that might be some condemnation. That might 
that might be something else that that's not true. And then, okay, does it line up with the word of God? Right. So, you know, amazing. But were you going to go through the exact steps? Yeah, I was going to try. <laughs> so, um, so you tune in to the flow because you um, begin to understand that there is a flow. The Bible says that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Holy Spirit is that flow. And so those that flow produces the thoughts and the pictures and the words that come up in your mind. So you tap into that flow. It's like a river that you just jump on and just ride with it wherever it's going to go, right? Um, so you tune into that. You tap into it. And you silence, well, before you tap into it, you silence your own mind. Because you have a voice, your internal voice and your external voice, you shut that down. You bring it subject to the obedience of the word of God. Take every thought captive and put it away in a prison and command it not to talk. (laughs) You know, so you command yourself personally. I silence my own mind. I silence uh, my soulish desires that might come out. I right. Well, every thing that could come against what's going on right now then you turn your attention to god and say father i use um submit yourself there therefore unto god resist satan he'll flee i use that scripture i say father i turn my attention to you i am fully submitted to you i resist satan so he has to flee so right now he doesn't have a voice in my hearing so i silence his voice now in the name of jesus he cannot talk to me because you have the authority over the enemy Amen. and when you tell him he can't talk to you he yeah. doesn't have a voice and so then you focus on holy spirit who's the flow mm. tap into that flow you tune into that flow and you say holy spirit i i look to you now and ask him to just feel you fresh you know it says be filled with the holy spirit it doesn't say get filled one time and that's all over it says be filled with the holy spirit so you ask him, I ask him, fill me, fill me afresh, brand new. Fill me all the way up, all the way up with your presence, with your spirit. Uh-huh. And I tune my ears to hear your voice. And I, by faith, tune into the spirit of truth who are talk, who you're talking to me because Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And so that's his job. He leads and guides us into all truths. Right. And so that's the process. You silence the voice of yourself. You silence the voice of the enemy. Therefore, the only voice that you're going to focus in on is that of of Holy Spirit. And then you start talking to him in faith that whatever you're hearing is him. And you Mm -hmm. write those things down. Mm -hmm. And then you go back and you read them later. And you will know that was not you. (laughs) And you will know that was not the enemy because he wouldn't tell you something so edifying and so, you know, refreshing and uplifting. He wouldn't do that. You know, he may make some corrections. Um, He may, you know, show you the love things that you need to work on. He might tell you how to walk out some things, but it's never going to be condemning. It's never going to be a negative word. It's going to always take you to somewhere better. And so that's the process. And you just start. I just take dictation when I do it. I, I go through that whole process and I sit with my eyes closed and whatever I hear him say, I type. I might not even be looking at the words on the screen as I'm typing. And after I'm finished, after I feel like he's done with that thought and sometimes it's back and forth, like, well, why did you say that? Or, you know, what about this? And, you know, and I'll ask my, I'll, I'll write down my questions too. And then when he answers me, he'll, you know, I'll, I'll, and then what I do just because I feel like this is holy writ <laughs> to me, cause it's holy writ to me. I put what he says in red. I do it in my journal. If you look at my journal, anything you see in red, he said it to me. So yeah. that's how it works. And it's it's a process that you need to get used to it. And the silence of your mind part, if you're like me, you're going to have to just work on it. It's going to be some diligent work that you're going to put <laughs> put towards it. Because every now and then I have to say, that was me, my bad, and put that down. Let me sit that down again. So, yeah, all right, mine, I cast you down now in the name of Jesus, you know. Tell it to be quiet. 
So, yeah, that's the process. Yeah. Um, you know, when you honor Holy Spirit and he starts talking to you, um, and you say, okay, this is, this is you. Okay. I, I believe it. I, by faith, this is you. I know it's you and you don't doubt it. And that's how you honor him. Because once he starts speaking, you honor what he says and just thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your words of truth and thank you for clarity and thank you for direction and Thank you for all of those things um, that's that's bringing me closer to you. And um, for me, <laughs> what I experienced was I couldn't write fast enough. I couldn't type fast enough. I would just be like, <laughs> it was so fast. Um, like, can you just say that out loud so I can record you? exactly exactly and you know and that's and and I have a voice recorder and so I would do that as well like um you know I would just start okay well I'm gonna go and worship and read the word and I'm just gonna do all this and then he's just gonna say stuff you know revelation the spirit of revelation like it's just gonna come in with something wisdom's gonna come in with something um now we're not talking about distractions we're talking about words from God and you'll know the difference because it'll be something that'll you'll get it and you'll be able to keep moving forward distraction will take you away from it so that's how you know the difference but um so for me it was like "Ah, I gotta get this down fast enough and so I would hear it and then okay I would go back and have a question and then he would just keep talking so I would just I ended up just typing like what he would say and he I would say like okay so Lord what about this and then he'll answer me. And then in my mind, without me even saying it out loud, I would say, well, you know, that really. And then he'll and then he would answer me out of that before I could get it out. He would be like, so you're doubting this, but this is what it is. And and I would be like, OK, you know, and then just typing it. So for me, it came so fast and just like, OK, like I can't. Stop this. This is a continual conversation. And when you tap into that, that's what it'll be like. It'll be a continual conversation. And just keep going. And when you want to stop it, that's when it'll stop. Not when God's like, because he's continually talking. Yeah. Um, And what I would do, like when he started going too fast, I'd be like, "Can can you stop for a second so I can catch up with you? And he would stop. He would be like, okay. And I was like, okay, I'm caught up. Go ahead. And I'll, and he'll stop. Janine, did you ever ask him to slow down? Um, yeah. I mean, I did. did you? I, okay. I did. I did. So like, um, if he was kept talking, you're just like, wait, wait, wait. Let me get it Well, off. no, because I know, what I got like, comfortable with, and, and this is how we're all different, because I just got comfortable with, okay, I may not necessarily get the answer out loud but he's answering me because I'm listening I'm listening and then in my mind I'm communicating and then I get an answer and so that that's what I became comfortable with yeah 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 so I think we're probably uh at at time if not over okay Um, but um Man, I love this. This is awesome. Hearing from God is so critical to your growth. You have to get into a place where you know, you recognize, know his voice because, yeah. you know, let's just do one example. You know, if if there's a kid and he trains his parents to tell him <laughs> six times before he actually gets up to move because the parents get trained, you know to start low and then by the time they get to the top of their lungs and calling his name he finally says oh they're serious now you know if that's the case if you're not capable of hearing and doing it the first time God is not obligated to say it twice so you really have to learn how to hear his voice you know and I'm not saying this to like you know say something bad is going to happen I'm just saying it's so important to be able to move with him and he may say, all right, don't do that today. You know, change the routine up. Let's do this. 
you know, and your sensitivity to say, you know, all right, well, I'll just do what you say. Or I'm not doing that. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Why would I change my routine? You know, and then something different happens. You know, you're going like, oh, something told me I should have <laughs> something. And the Holy Spirit is his name. And you need to call him and say, I apologize for not obeying you. The same way I apologize to that guy for not praying for him. God told me two days before, you know, and I'm like, please forgive me because I had repented already to God for not doing it. But I had to repent to him, too. But that's my integrity. You know, I wouldn't. I I had to tell him that I was supposed to do it prior, but I didn't because that's my integrity. So um, just know that God is always talking and um, he wants to talk to you. He wants to tell you about your life, some of the great things he has planned. He wants to warn you about things that are, that may be in your path to uh, just help you change, make slight adjustments that may change your walk, change your path just a little bit to get you, you know, perfectly aligned with him. And so you you have to just train your ears how to hear him. So it's very, very important. You have anything else, Janine? No. Okay, so this is episode 10. I think that's significant. Um, it, it's, it's powerful that we're here. Episode 10, that's double digits. I don't know if we even thanked you guys for downloading us a thousand times. A thousand downloads in a month? That is hot. So, like, by the time this one comes up, I don't know how many it's going to be. But thank you, thank you, thank you from all around the world. And you're downloading these podcasts. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please know that we are praying for you in yeah. every country, in every nation. We actually prayed for you just past this past week to just release the glory of God in your nation as you're just watching these podcasts. So, we just do that right now. We just release the power of God, the glory of God in your home, in your community and, you know, in your family, just that his glory just be made manifest on you. You know, that Isaiah 60, 61 thing, you know, where the spirit of the Lord, just, you know, the glory of God is going to shine up on you. So uh, we just bless you in Jesus name. Thank you. And we'll see you next time in episode 11. God bless you and keep you. He caused his face to shine upon you and all of the rest of that. I should know, but I don't know it right now. <laughs> but I love you guys. Have a good time and see you next time. Episode 11. Peace. Thank you for watching this podcast. We hope you are blessed. Tune in to our next episode as the journey continues.